As humans, being honest with ourselves about our own flaws is incredibly difficult. Commonly, it's far easier to identify other people's flawed thinking than our own. Nevertheless, to be a successful investor requires you to commit to a sufficient degree of self-awareness. This is because your success as an investor will, to a large extent, be determined by the patterns of thinking that you engage in. Cognitive biases represent ways of perceiving the world that may not reflect reality. As an investor, it is important for you to be aware of how they can function to distort reality. Moreover, recognizing their existence can enable you to become wiser, allowing you to learn more about how you think and why you think in particular ways. There are numerous cognitive biases that affect investors. However, in this video we'll be exploring familiarity bias. Before we begin, let me remind you that I have created many other cognitive biases videos for you to learn from and develop as an investor. Okay, now on to familiarity bias. Familiarity bias is the tendency for individuals to prefer what is familiar and to seek to avoid the unknown. Do you favor a specific brand of clothes? Perhaps you tend to favor eating at the same restaurants or using the same route again and again to reach a destination. These are examples of familiarity bias in everyday life. Many investors allow familiarity bias to affect the investment decisions that they take. Let's now take a look at three examples. 1. Home bias. Home bias refers to the tendency of some investors to prefer investing in the stock market of their home country, as opposed to foreign stock markets. You may be familiar with the term, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Investors that overinvest in their home market, otherwise known as their domestic market, are guilty of doing this. Home bias affects many investors from around the globe. In a 2017 paper by Vanguard entitled The Global Case for Strategic Asset Allocation and an Examination of Home Bias, the company reported on the fact that, on average, Canadian investors allocated 59% of their portfolios to their home market. This is despite the fact that the Canadian equity market accounted for only around 3-4% to of the global equity market. The data is even more striking for Australian investors. Despite the fact that the Australian stock market accounted for only 2-3% of the global stock market, Australian investors, on average, allocated 67% of their portfolios to their domestic stock market. Perhaps the most notorious example of home bias comes from Japan. Many years of high returns in the immediate post-war period compelled a significant number of Japanese investors to become complacent and succumb to home bias. This was a mistake because in 1990 the Japanese benchmark index, the Nikkei 225, plunged by more than 60% and hasn't recovered since. Let's take a moment now to reflect on the third bedrock principle of the sloth investor. It is owning the world. So, why is this such an important principle for Mr. Sloth? Well, quite simply, it's because the sloth investor recognizes that quality companies exist in every corner of the globe. An investor that overinvests in one specific geographic region is making a mistake by limiting their exposure to the other regions of the world. On a similar note, Daniel Crosby, author of The Behavioral Investor, states, We would all be wise to recognize that industriousness and ingenuity are not the purview of any one place and invest accordingly. Diversification is key to constructing your investment portfolio. Ensuring that you give yourself exposure to the varied regions of the world enables your portfolio to capture the growth and innovation that exists across the globe. Lars Kreuger, author of Investing Demystified States, by expanding the portfolio beyond the home market, we achieve much greater diversification in our investments. This is because we spread our investments over a larger number of stocks, but more importantly, because those stocks are based in different geographical areas and local economies. So that's home bias, the first example of how some investors can be inclined to fall prey to familiarity bias. Let's take a look now at our second example. 2. Familiar companies you use. Remember at the start of this video how I mentioned that we humans tend to display an inclination towards specific brands or companies. Well, some investors make the mistake of allowing such loyalties to affect their investment portfolios. Whether it's the clothing brand that you tend to wear or the fast food restaurant that you tend to favor, 
just because you regularly use a particular company doesn't necessarily mean it will be a great investment. Quite simply, although you may be a fan and regular user of the brand, how confident can you be that a significant number of other people are? Moreover, although you may be familiar with the company's products, how familiar are you with the long-term growth prospects of the company? Okay, let's take a look now at our third and final example of familiarity bias. It's the familiarity bias brought about by the influence of those close to us, such as family members or friends. 3. Companies recommended by friends or family members. Our friends and family members can influence us in many ways. Whether it's musical taste, our taste in movies, or other leisure pursuits, it's undeniable that those close to us can exert a key impact on the decisions that we take in our everyday life. In a similar way, some investors allow the influence of key figures in their life to affect the makeup of their investment portfolio. However, just because your cousin or uncle works for a software company and talks positively about it doesn't mean that it will be a great investment. Or maybe there's a colleague at the water cooler that regularly talks about a company that they favor. Due to your familiarity with this person, perhaps you trust their sense of judgment. Whether it's a family member with close connections to a specific organization or a friend talking positively about a particular company, allowing those that are close to us to overly influence our investment portfolios is a very real risk. So there you have it, three examples of familiarity bias. Familiarity bias is a cognitive bias that comes in many forms and unfortunately tends to affect many investors in a negative way. It's important to ensure that you do not allow familiarity bias to overly influence the construction of your investment portfolio and, subsequently, your investment returns. So, what's the remedy to familiarity bias? Well, it's that 15-letter D word again. Diversification. Constructing a diversified portfolio can enable you to avoid the dangers of familiarity bias, providing you with exposure to a wide range of companies across a broad range of regions. To keep up to date with the latest content from The Sloth Investor, whether this be my podcast or other video content, please remember to subscribe to this channel.